So welcome back. Now, if you've already got all of your estimates at the start of the project, then the next step for you is to plan the project and figure out what it is going to take for you to deliver the project. And that's where we come back to our initial three questions. You've got your sizes using relative sizing techniques such as planning poker or the warp speed trick that we discussed in this masterclass. Now you've got to answer how fast you can go. And there you have the notion of raw velocity. Now, what is raw velocity? It's, an, it's a piece of agile jargon, to be honest. But what that jargon essentially means is that you have an assumed number of developers in dev pairs. And if everything's perfect, how many story points can they deliver in a sprint? And then, of course, you have an assumption of how long that sprint is going to be. Typically, that's two weeks. So that's what you're trying to find out. So let's say you have 100 points to deliver, and you discover that your team can deliver 10 points per sprint as their raw velocity, then if everything is ideal, then in 10 sprints, you can deliver the whole project. That's if everything's ideal. Things are never ideal. But let's explore this a little further. So the question really is, you have this backlog, how are you going to deliver it? So first things first, you've got to estimate a good cross-section of that backlog. Once you've done that, you need to hide all the estimates. Only you, as the product owner, knows exactly the estimates for every story. The developers don't know because they're going to be playing this game. Work with the devs and ask them to fill three imaginary sprints until they feel full. All right. You assume a certain number of developers, you assume a certain sprint size. So the developers will then take a bunch of stories, they'll organize them, and they'll say, okay, this feels full. This is when you reveal the estimates. Now, once you reveal the estimates, you've got to total them up. And when you total them up, you are seeing here that sprint one is 12 points, sprint two is 14 points, and then sprint three is 11 points. Okay, so there's some variance right there, right? No worries. You note down what you've achieved in this particular round. So in this round, an average tells you that, well, the developers feel it's going to be about 12-ish points, 12.33 points per sprint. Remember, we don't want to be precise. We want to be accurate. Okay, so you go one more round and say, all right, developers, let's fill out the sprints. And you do this again. And you know the drill. Well, reveal the estimates. And then, again, you know the drill. Sum them up. So here we are seeing there is a little more convergence, 12 points, 12 points, 13 points but probably not as much convergence as we would have liked, probably nothing better than last time. So if you take an average, well, round two gives you 12.33 points as well. So maybe that's getting to above what our initial velocity could be, our raw velocity could be. So let's do another round and clarify our understanding. You know the drill, ask your developers to fill up sprints, they do that. And now you total again and you see that probably you're getting to some sort of convergence and you see, well, the sum total of each of those prints comes to 12 points. So across all of those runs, you've got about 12 points or thereabouts as your raw velocity. Now you can use this as a starting point to do the rest of your planning. First things first, to keep in mind, if you see very wild variances, that's a topic for discussion. Pause the exercise, have a conversation. Now, this number that you're going to get at the end of the whole exercise, the raw velocity of 12 points, this isn't just a simple uh, average, right? You've got to ensure that the team feels comfortable. If the team doesn't feel comfortable with this exercise, have a conversation, read the exercise, and arrive at a number that the team can put their weight behind it. Now, this 12 points assumes a few things. Whatever the assumptions might be, write them down. If the assumptions change, everything else will change along with it. And also remember, this is only a starting point. You'll have to revise it as you learn more. So for example, if while delivering the project, you realize that, oh, we're delivering 16 points per sprint. That just means that your assumptions at the beginning weren't correct. And you need to revisit this with the notion of yesterday's weather. What is yesterday's weather? Well, 
if I was to predict how the weather is going to be today, then my reference, unless I'm a meteorologist, meteorologist, I'm the Met, all right? If I'm the Met, then maybe I've got some science to predict this. But if I'm using just guesses, then I'll say today's weather is going to be like yesterday's weather. So yeah, use this as a starting point for your planning, but revise it as you learn more. All right, so that's how you play the velocity game. And in the next episode, we'll talk you through how you can use this notion of raw velocity to put together your plan for your project. See you there.